Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi hello I'm Lydia and today I'm standing up to film the video because my knee is not hurting as much as it normally does and also I've tried sitting down to film this video and I've got nowhere but first, if you're new, hey what's up? hit the subscribe button, join the growing family. Today we're talking about what caused my PTSD. So without further ado, the trigger warning. This video contains talk of suicides, rape, sexual assault and abuse. Oh, I want to sit down. To begin with, I was about five years old and my mum was abusive. Throughout me growing up, my mum has been quite abusive to me. We get getting so much better now that I don't live with her. So my mum abused me between the ages of five and thirteen. When I was thirteen it stopped because she married my stepdad, who doesn't acknowledge my existence, hates me, don't even get a hello when I see him. What are you gonna do? My mum the way my mum would abuse me would be she would name call, call me fat, which is really where my eating disorder stems from. Then we have the physical abuse. So she would slap me if I said something she didn't like. One specific story I remember is there was a tissue down on the side of my bed that I forgot to pick up while I was tidying in my room. Because you know, it's t a tissue, who's going to remember that? And she grabbed me by the neck and she pushed my headband into my head and it left an imprint. She pushed me into shells, pushed me down the stairs. Just a lot of bad shit. Like I said, we get on fine now. We've never had a conversation about it because she was always like, oh, we've already talked about this. That was the first real trauma I experienced. Next, we've got high school bullying. What fun. I was bullied from the age of 11 all the way through to 16. Yay school. There was hate campaigns on, on Facebook. There was trolling. There was literally getting punched. Filming this video is hard. I'm basically triggering myself every time I talk about these things. School was just horrible. I only have one friend left from school. The next big thing that happened in my life was my ex-boyfriend. When I was 17, I was at his house, so I just stayed over there. His parents' house. He was 17, we can't afford a house. And he basically trapped me in his bedroom, wouldn't let me leave, pushed me onto his bed, and raped me. After that, we went to the train station to college and we, we walked we walked down to the edge of the platform and he, and he said to me this is because of you and jumped as the train was approaching I still don't know what I did to deserve that and that's not an idea of every day that I go out when I go to uni and then I wait for a tube, all I can picture is someone jumping in front. Him jumping in front of the train was probably one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever had. That is the one that pops up the most when I have flashbacks. Next we move on to Preston. I don't know where Preston is, is in Lancashire, which is in the northwest of England. I told this story in one of my recent videos, I think. But I, w I used to go out drinking every night. And one night I got taken out of the club by a guy who seemed nice. And so he pushed me into a hedge and raped me. And left me there. I was too drunk to even care. Just to put it out there, I've never actually had consensual sex. I wonder what it's like. 
Then we move on to something a bit more serious. We're moving on to Lancashire Police. Now I was physically assaulted by them in 2017. She, this woman grabbed my arm, bent it round, pulled me, and said, stop messing around because I called the NHS 111 system because I was feeling suicidal. I can't control whether they phone police or not. That's not my call. But we get to the part where I got arrested. And I got sexually assaulted in custody. Which haunts me every time I hear a fucking siren. I am too scared to go out unless I'm going to uni and I have my headphones in on full blast. I don't go out for walks because I get triggered and I dissociate. It's just not safe. But yeah, that happened. So it's London where I made my most fatal suicide attempt. Dropped down to a bed because I, I kept trying to leave. I didn't even know in the UK you could strap people to bed, but they can, and it hurts. And honestly, that was traumatizing because I literally couldn't do anything. I, I was stuck there while they, they did all their injecting the treatment until they sedated me because I wouldn't shut up. That's why I am. If you, don't, if you touch me, I will fucking scream. All in all, I've been through a lot of trauma and it's hard. It's one of the hardest things in the world to live with. Personally, I think people overlook things if they can't understand it. Like I said, there are a lot of factors that come into my PTSD. I'm convinced I have CPTSD, not PTSD. I just turned my flash on. Well, that was unexpected. Now, I'm on a waiting list to do trauma therapy, so there is that, which is good. And yeah, that's all I've got for this video. If you are new, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Perfect timing. Peace.